Hi there, this is Elaine. Today's story is called Ruby the Reindeer, Part 3. And this is the Christmas story for this year. Now there's been Ruby the Reindeer, Part 1 and Part 2. And this story is called Ruby, Robbie and Richie. So if it's your first time listening, a big welcome. If you've listened before, welcome back. So the first thing you need to do is get yourself really, really comfortable. So pull up the covers if you have them. Get that pillow nice and squishy. Wiggle your toes. Just move around until you feel really comfortable. And how about we do some breathing now? Now you know if you've listened to me before how much emphasis I put on breathing. And it's really good for your body. It's really good for your mind. Let me show you how. So first of all, I want you to take a nice deep breath in through your nose like this. And then blow out through your mouth like this. Okay, let me do it for you again. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Now, I wonder if you can do it. Let's do it together. Breathe in, breathe out. I think you've got it. Well done. And you might even start to notice your body feeling a little bit more relaxed. You might even feel a little bit calmer. So are you ready? Are you ready for the story? Santa's letter to Ruby arrived on time this year and the letter was asking Ruby to pull the sleigh on Christmas Eve. Now Ruby was very happy to be asked as last year she could only help with the planning as Rudolph was back. This year because one of the older reindeer could not pull the sleigh any longer, Santa had asked Ruby to step in. But there was a problem. The letter Ruby got from Santa sat on the sideboard in Ruby's room for a few days. She hadn't even told her mum and dad about it. You see, Ruby had a little accident last month and she broke her leg. She was just playing tobogganing with some of her friends and she fell, rolling down the hill, snapped her leg and it was broken. She'd been in plaster for a few weeks now. And although she can still walk on three legs, she will not be able to pull the sleigh. So, you see, when Santa's letter came, she just felt very sad and very, very disappointed. Ruby hasn't seen much of her friend Robbie since the accident. 
Ruby and Robbie also have a new friend who started at school called Richie. Richie is a very strong reindeer. And Ruby had a thought that maybe he could pull the sleigh on Christmas Eve for Santa. But even thinking about that made her so sad. I mean, this was her opportunity to pull the sleigh and now she couldn't do it. It's just not fair. She found it even hard to be happy about anything. And because she didn't know what to do, she just stayed in her room. Ruby's dad knocked on the door. Ruby, he said, we need to talk about Christmas Eve. Santa called and he wants to know if you got his letter. I, t I told him you broke in your leg and that you were very sad. Can I come in, he said. Can we talk? Okay, said Ruby, and dad walked in. And after giving her a big hug, cause hugs are always good when you're sad, he sat on the bed. Santa has thought about a way you can still go to the North Pole and help, he said. He knows how much you love being part of the sleigh team. He knows what it means to you, Ruby, and he wants to help. I don't want to do the planning this year, she wailed. I want to pull the sleigh, Daddy. It's just not fair. Santa knows that, Ruby, and here's what he's suggesting. If you can find a really strong reindeer who can take your place, Santa can make a little seat in front for you to sit on and the strong reindeer can stand behind you and pull you along. Although he knows you want to be pulling the sleigh, you'll think you are. Ruby sat up, looking and feeling just a little bit more hopeful than she had in a while. Santa can get helpers who can build the little seat, said Dad. And as long as the other reindeer is strong enough, it will work. Ruby immediately thought of Richie, her new reindeer friend, and how strong and nice he was. I know someone, said Ruby. His name is Richie. He goes to my school and he's so strong, Dad. I think I might be able to get him to help. The next day, Ruby and her dad went to school and waited at the gate for Richie. Richie arrived with Robbie and both were very pleased to see Ruby. We've missed you, Ruby. Where have you been? said Robbie. We need to talk to you, Richie. And Robbie, you can come too, said Dad. The four reindeer found a nice quiet place under the tree. And Dad explained what Santa had said about having a strong reindeer to pull the sleigh. And that by making a little seat for Ruby, she can still be on the sleigh on Christmas Eve. Can you do it, Richie? said Ruby. Will you help me? I've, well, I've never done anything like this before, said Richie. But if you think I'm strong enough, okay. I think you can do it, said Robbie. And maybe I could do the job I had last year, helping the kids around the world get a present. I was really good at that, he said, smiling. That 
That's a great idea, said Ruby. And she felt herself smile for the first time in a long time and was so grateful she had two of the best friends. Dad said he would call Santa back and tell him to get the special helpers to make the seat for Ruby and that you would arrive at the North Pole the day before Christmas as they have a lot of things to do before then. Dad also called Felix the cat who was now the permanent driver of the Sky Bus and booked three tickets to the North Pole the day before Christmas Eve. Before they knew it, it was the 22nd of December and just like last year, Ruby struggled to sleep. She was very excited so her dad put on her favourite bedtime story, Ruby the Reindeer Part 1. I think you might know who tells this story, said Dad with a giggle. And as usual, before long, Ruby was fast asleep. The next day Ruby woke with a big yawn. <gasps> it was very light outside and the sun was shining high in the sky. There was snow everywhere. It looked like the prettiest white fairy land and she was very excited. It wasn't long before both Robbie and Richie arrived and Mum made them a very nice breakfast of grass and shrubbery and birches and the yummiest mushrooms. All three reindeer got to work cleaning their antlers and blackening their hoofs. Ruby remembered how important it is to look smart. Soon it was time to go to the bus and the three very proud reindeer, together with Dad, started walking through the snow to the bus depot. Felix the fox was in the driver's seat and waved at them. Hi Ruby, he shouted. This is Robbie and Richie, they're coming to the North Pole with me this year, she said. Well, in you get, he said, and buckle up. We've got a long way to go. Dad waved at them and blew Ruby a kiss. Go get him, he said. Have fun. Chug, chug, chug went the bus over the mountains, down through valleys. This little bus was doing well and soon they entered into the valley where Willie the walrus lives. This time the road was clear with only the occasional walrus lying around. And the little bus managed to weave its way through the valley without a problem. Just before they got to the end of the valley, Willie the walrus waved them down. Uh, hi there guys, we have a few walruses that need to get to the North Pole. Can you take them, Felix? Sure, how many, said Felix. Well, there's 20 of them, said Willie. 20? We can't take 20, said Felix. This is a little bus and these walruses are huge. I can take four, but that's it. You see, I have Ruby and Robbie and Richie here as well. well can't we put some of them on the roof, said Willie? Well... Maybe a couple, maybe three maximum, but I don't know how. Three of the smaller walruses from the same family all began to cry. <laughs> we need to get to the North Pole tonight, said the smallest one. We have a very, very important job that needs to get done tonight. We have to make a special seat for a reindeer 
please can you take us? Ruby heard this and said to the smallest walrus, that, that seat's for me. Ruby looked at Felix. Felix, please, can you take the walruses, please? Felix got out of the bus and wondered how on earth he was going to get three walruses on the roof. Robbie and Richie got out too and together they worked out a plan where they could have the three walruses all huddled together in a big sheet of strong material and then tie the material together and then tie the sheet to the top of the bus. They spent the next hour working out the best way to do this and by the end it did look a bit strange but the three walruses were comfortably tied to the little roof of the bus. The bus had to go a little slower but very soon they arrived in polar bear country. Felix had called Annabelle to see if she could get some of the polar bears to come and help push the bus. It was going a bit slow you see. Soon there were 25 polar bears all running, some pushing, some pulling, and soon they were on their way down the hill towards the North Pole. The little bus picked up speed and it wasn't long before they could see the lights of the North Pole and Santa's yard. As the bus entered the yard, Santa, the reindeer and his helpers all waved and welcomed Ruby, Robbie and Richie. I am so happy to see you, Ruby. And I see you brought the walruses so they can now make the seat. Ho, 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 said Santa. Very soon they all got to work and before long the seat was ready. A beautiful red shiny seat that fitted perfectly into the sleigh. Richie jumped in and Ruby sat in the seat in front of him to try it out. This is great, she laughed. This will be perfect. The next day, Christmas Eve, everyone worked very hard and soon it was time to take off. All the reindeer got into place. Ruby got into her little seat and Richie was standing behind her all harnessed up. The presents were all loaded and the other reindeer were ready. Santa jumped into his seat and the sleigh took off. Robbie and the walruses waved as the sleigh started to lift into the sky higher and higher and higher. Ruby was the happiest reindeer. This was the best experience ever. On the ground, Robbie and walruses were feeling a little tired. So they found a nice warm hay shed and all lay down, feeling really good about how they'd helped to make Christmas so special again this year. It wasn't long before you could hear yawning and soon, very soon, all the animals were fast asleep. I'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Night night.